We had a someone that subscribes to our our, uh, our YouTube channel ask about a double upright AFO that was limited motion. So I wanted to basically put a video out there for her and for anyone else who has questions about their prescription for a double upright AFO. They come in varying designs, dorsiflexion assist, limited motion, double action. We're going to go over a limited motion uh, AFO. That's what this is here. Basically limited motion means that the, the brace itself doesn't move. It's designed to restrict ankle motion. You go to a metal brace when plastic isn't indicated for whatever reason. Patient's diabetic, fluctuating edema, uh, insensate, dot, dot, dot. So the physician makes the call as to whether or not it's plastic or metal. Uh, when you make a limited motion AFO, what you need to do, basically what it is, there's a stirrup that's mounted to the shoe, the sole is pulled off, the stirrup is mounted, and then the sole is put back on. This design has a, a rocker bottom, and uh, what we need to do, when you want to limit motion, you either need to use a stirrup that's got a long tongue so that you rigidify the shoe, because you can't have the shoe bending in here that basically negates the purpose. So you either need to use a, a stirrup that's a long tongue or you need to add a steel shank to rigidify the sole. Basically it's a leather cuff that goes around the calf. All of this metal, none of this metal touches the, the leg anywhere. Uh, this one is attached to a boot. We also make them attached to shoes. Um, a very effective design. The problem with these is they're a little bit weighty. Um, the, the version that I prefer as opposed to strictly limited motion with a single hinge here where you're stuck with whatever alignment that you build it in and if it's built in proper alignment you know you're, you're, you're good. I prefer when I do a limited motion to use a, a double action joint which this has screws here and channels here where you can actually we put metal steel pins in here so you can position the leg and get better alignment at fitting. Uh, this is the problem with double action is this is a steel head. It needs to be steel so it adds a little bit of weight. It's I think that it's it's okay to add that little bit of weight if for a little bit better function, for a little bit better alignment and gait. With this one you're pretty much stuck with how you align it and if you're good and you, 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 you tend to get it right but if it's not just perfect, well, there's really no modifying it. With this one, you can reposition it. This one, this particular design here is a split caliper design. And, and what's good about that is with this design, you're stuck with one shoe. It is mounted to the shoe and fixed forever. With the split caliper, you could actually get a shoe and have the uh, caliper plate mounted to the shoe and you can have more than one shoe. So basically this, once I undo the T-strap here, the brace is transferable from shoe to shoe. Now this is this is metal. We, we powder coat ours. Most people don't do that. We just like the appearance. It kind of makes it less noticeable. But in this design, this is also limited motion. We've got a long tongue stirrup in here. And uh, the... Uh, there we've got pins in here so that at fitting this can be modified and adjusted for the patient's range of motion. I use this strap that basically goes around the shoe because the split caliper has a tendency to come loose. I came up with this design for a strap that basically goes around the back of the shoe and holds it in. It's just a simple little velcro strap which is a handy design to keep these in place. Also with just as an aside, this one has a T-strap. I like to attach the T-strap to a custom foot orthotic that basically you get good arch support in there and then the T-strap actually works to pull the medial arch up and gets a more effective put, pull for someone who has a mid-arch mid collapse. This design would be for someone with posterior tibial tendon dysfunction that has gone to the point of, of basically collapse. and, and in this design, they're not, or in that, some patients that have that severe of a deformity or you can't get away with plastic. 
So you basically make a double upright AFO solid ankle with a medial T-strap to help pull the arch over. And over time, as the patient tolerates it, they'll get correction of that medial arch. It takes time and they have to be able to tolerate that pressure. This strap is left long till fitting and then we cut it and we sew it. Um, but these both basically serve the same purpose, which is to limit motion at the ankle joint. They, we can also make these with hinges and a spring assist or free motion if, if someone just has a, a problem with, with the ankle instability side to side, they're fine moving up and down, but the side to side motion needs to be minimized. You can give them free motion and uh, just a metal brace ties the ankle into the lower leg, which virtually eliminates the need for, uh, for eliminates the, 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 the medial lateral or side to side instability. Typically, a free motion AFO will have a T-strap either on the inside or on the outside to help control that ankle malalignment or that ankle instability from side to side. So, uh, this one is a little bit lighter weight. It's mounted permanently to the shoe. And this one is a little bit heavier, but more adjustable. The, the caliper plate itself, the receiver plate, which I didn't go over, uh, is mounted to the shoe and that way patients can have other shoes done. Now typically the insurance is only going to pay for one so the patient's going to have to pay to have caliper plates put on shoes not cheap around uh, 90 to 100 dollars typically to have a caliper plate put on your shoe but it's worth it when you've got to wear it to have more than one shoe uh, and every year when you need a new brace you don't have to bring in the whole brace and have it transferred to another shoe, you bring in the shoe and have them put a plate on it and then you, the patient transfers it themselves. So after a year, this shoe's worn out, they can use it in the garden, in the yard, and uh, bring in a new shoe, put a caliper plate on, they can continue to use their brace. When it's done, they come in, pick up the shoe, and the brace is simply transferred to the new shoe. And that's about it for the double upright AFOs as far as just a basic introduction as to what they are and, and how they function.